going to go ahead and start recording y'all. So let's go through the 7.2 business and see if we can't make sense out of it, okay? So 7.2 is talking about hypothesis testing for a mean when we happen to know the population standard deviation. We know our sigma. So it says, once again, the decision to reject or fail to reject an all hypothesis depends on the p-value of a test statistic. Okay, so what we're looking at here, it says, we're going to use a p-value to make a decision um, in a hypothesis, and we're going to compare the p-value with our alpha. So this part right here, y'all, says if p is smaller than alpha, we're going to reject the null hypothesis, and if p is bigger than alpha, then we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So number one says the p-value for a hypothesis test is uh, 0 0.0237. What's our decision if the level of significance is? And it gives me two values here, okay? So the one thing that I really want to emphasize is I'm always going to be comparing my P number with my alpha, okay? So my P number in this case is 0 0.0237. And then I'm going to write my alpha to the right side, 0 0.05, okay? And what I want to do is I want to compare these two numbers. So I want to know, is it smaller than or equal to, or is it bigger than? So, guys, in, in case you struggle with this, you know, one thing you can always do is say, look, zero and zero are the same. My decimals are the same. Zero is the same. Two is smaller than five. So I'm going to put less than or equal to. And if it's less than or equal to, then I'm going to say we're going to reject. So right here, I'm going to put reject the HO, okay? And then I'll play that same game again. So I'm going to put my 0 0.2 or 0 0.0237. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to put 0 0.01. Okay. And then I can do the same thing. So zero and zero are the same. The decimals oops, are the same. This zero is the same. This two is bigger than that one. And if it's bigger than, then right here, we're going to say we're going to fail to reject. be a T, the H O. Okay. So for the next part here, it says, uh, finding the P value for a hypothesis test. It says, um, for a left tail test, uh, the P is going to be the area in the left part of the tail. For a right tail test, P will be the area in the right part of the tail. And if, if it's a two tail test, P is going to be twice the area in the tail of the standardized test statistic. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what are, they, what are they basically asking me to do in this problem. So it says, find a p-value for a left tail hypothesis test with a test statistic of z equals negative 2.23. Decide whether to reject the, the, the reject the HO if the level of significance alpha is 0 0.01. Okay, so the first thing I want to emphasize here, y'all, it's telling me this is a left tail test and my z value is negative 2.23. So remember, here's zero, negative one, negative two. So negative 2.23 is gonna be right about here, and this is a left tail test. So what this means is I'm really looking for the area under the curve up to that point. So the way I can find the area under my curve, we've done this part before, but we're gonna go through it again. On our calculators, y'all, we're gonna use our normal CDF, and because we are finding the area to the left, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to stop at negative 2.23. And that value that I come up with is going to be my p-value. And one thing I'm going to emphasize, y'all, and let me do it this way, is when I do this, whenever I get my number for p, I know it's going to be a decimal. It's going to be point something. I'm going to go to four decimal places, okay? So, um, let me pull up my calculator, and I'm going to show you. I know we've done this before, but I want you all just to see it again. I know it's been a little while since we've done this, so let's make sure that we're all good here. And perfect. Okay, so I think you guys can see this part now. So remember, we're going to go second, then VARS. We're going to get the second one, which is our normal CDF. We're going to enter a negative 9999, comma, uh, negative 2.23, close that off, hit enter, 
And so remember, I'm going to go to four decimal places here. So the number that I'm coming up with is 0.012. I'm going to say that's a 9 because the number after the 8 is a 7. So 0 0.0129. So let me stop sharing this part. Let me come back to my notes. Here we go. And we said 0 0.0129. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to compare our P with our alpha. So, guys, I want to emphasize something real quick here. If you notice how this part is written, it's always going to be the P and then the alpha, okay? So my P number was 0 0.0129. My alpha in this case is 0 0.01. So zeros and zeros match up. One and one matches up. Two, and if you don't know what's over here, it's always a zero, right? So this is greater than. So our P number is greater than alpha. And if P is greater than alpha, all we're going to do here is we're just going to say we're going to fail to reject the alternate or the null hypothesis. In general. And that's really all it is I'm trying to do for this part here, okay? I'm not really trying to do anything different other than find out those pieces of information. So look, let's do number three. We're going to go about it the same way. Okay, so number three says we're still done with the left help test, test statistic of negative 1.71. So remember, here's zero, negative one, negative two. So negative 1.71 is going to be right about there. And again, one more time, this is the left tail test. So, yo, the way we did this before, remember, we're going to take our normal CDF. And we're going to go from negative 9999 to a negative 1.71. And that's going to give me my p value. So, guys, I'm just going to do this real quick instead of pulling up the calculator. But you can do it also if you want to do it on yours, just to double check. And we said negative 1.71. And I'm coming up with point, uh, 0.0436. So 0 0.0436. So now I'm going to compare 0 0.0436 to my alpha, which in this case is 0 0.05. And let's see. So this is less than or equal to, right? And guys, the reason why I'm putting the less than or equal to is that when I scroll back up here to the top, that's exactly what we have right here, right? So now I know we're just going to reject the null hypothesis. So here I'm going to say we're going to reject the HO. That's really all I'm trying to do for these first couple of problems. I do want to show you all for number four how to do this because um, we're going to find the p-value for a two-tailed hypothesis test with a test, ah, excuse me, test statistic of 2.14. Okay, so first thing is if this is a two-tailed test, there's going to be two values that we're going to use. We're going to use a value here. We're going to use a value here. So the Z value they gave me was 2.14. So then this one here is going to be a negative 2.14. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to find the area under the curve on both of them. One thing I want to emphasize, y'all, is that if I find the area on this piece, like the way we've been doing, then whatever area, whatever number I come up with here, that's going to be the same one over here because this graph is symmetric. So remember how we did that. We said we were going to go normal CDF. Since I'm going from the left to the negative 9999 to a negative 2.14, I'm going to go ahead and do that part on my calculator one more time. So let me go ahead and do that. And it was 2.14. Uh, 2.14, the negative, so 2.14, and the number I'm coming up with is 0 0.0162, 0 0.0162. So this number here is a 0 0.0162, and so this one here is going to be a 0 0.0162. So the part that's going to be slightly different here, my p-value is going to be 0 0.0162, 
plus another 0 0.0162, or you can just multiply it both by two, right? Because that's in essence what it is we're doing. But we're taking both of them and adding them together, okay? So uh, let me do that real quick. 0 0.0162 times two is 0 0.0324. 0.0324. Now, again, what I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm going to compare this number here to our alpha, which is a 0.05. So, again, this is smaller than or equal to. And, guys, one thing I want to emphasize, um, in, your, in the uh, week 12 and the week 13 folder, uh, I'm going to stop sharing this real quick. I did put a file in there, and let me see if I can get it here. Here we go. So I called it the Chapter 7 Cheat Sheet, and I just opened mine up in, in uh, Word, but I, I put it for you as a, um, as a PDF file, right? But I have this here because this is going to be super helpful when we're doing these problems here on a 7.2 and 7.3. But what I wanted to emphasize, let me see if I can get this going here, here we go, was having this, oops, having this piece here accessible definitely makes doing the problems a little bit easier, right? And so we said our P was smaller than our alpha, so we're going to go ahead and reject our HO, right? So let me come back one more time and get my notes one more time. Get my notes. Okay, so since it is smaller, we're going to go ahead. Come on, Penn. There we go. We're going to go ahead and reject the HO. Okay. So now let's. We're going to do the next part here, y'all. And um, and again, I'm going to walk y'all through this process. And we're going to be talking about how to use p values for something called a Z test. Okay. And it says a Z test for a mean mu. It says uh, a Z test for a mean mu is just a, a statistical test for a population. And the test statistic is something we call the sample mean X bar. And the standardized test statistic is given to me by this little formula right here. And guys, I'm going to be using this formula as I'm doing the next two problems. Okay. Uh, the sample needs to be random, and the population has to be normally distributed, or my n has to be bigger than or equal to 30. Okay, so we're going to walk through this, and I'm hoping that as we go through this part, guys, I know it's going to be a little intimidating, but I'm hoping what's going to happen is that we can make this a little bit easy breezy cover girl. It, it may not seem like that at first, but I'm hoping that it does after a while. Okay, so it says verify that sigma is known, and the sample is random, and the population is normally distributed with n greater than 30. It, it usually is going to be like that. Uh, it says, state the claim mathematically and verbally, identify the null and the alternate hypothesis. We're going to specify the level of significance. We're going to find our alpha. We're going to do our standardized test statistic. And then we're going to find the area that corresponds to that test statistic Z. Um, then we're going to find our p-value uh, by doing the you know, left tail, right tail, whatever it happens to be. And then we're going to make a decision to either reject or fail to reject an all hypothesis, and we're going to interpret the decision in the context of the claim. I know that's a lot. Um, again, let's go through this and see if we can make sense out of it. Okay, so number five says, in erasing, in racing, a pit crew claims that the mean pit time, pit time, pit stop time, sorry, is less than 13 seconds. Okay, so as I read that first part right there, it says the mean pit stop time is less than 13 seconds. So mu is less than 13. Y'all, this is going to be my claim. Okay. And the first thing I want you to notice, this here does not have an equal to. If it does not have an equal to, this is going to be what we call our alternate hypothesis. I call it the hop because it looks like HA. Okay. And the reason is because it does not have an equal to. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, look at what we have here in this, in this box. What's the opposite of saying something is less than? We'll say it's either bigger than or possibly equal to. Okay. Now this is going to be our, our null hypothesis. Okay. So I'm going to come back real quick. And it says, 
So did we, I'm sorry, did we even know that sigma was known? Yeah, because it tells me right here, population standard deviation is 0.19. Okay, so we have that. So we already did number one, we did number two. Uh, identify alpha, alpha is right here. So we've done that. So look, we've already done one, two, and three. Super simple, super, super quick, we're able to do one, two, and three. Now, we're gonna do number four. This is the formula for number four. So guys, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna write down the formula. It says X bar minus, oops. X bar minus mu over, I usually write this in parentheses, sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay. <clears throat> So now let's see if we can figure out the next part. I'm going to start reading right here. A random sample of 32 pit, time, pit, pit stop times. Sorry, that's my n. My n is 32 because we checked this out after 32 times. Set has a sample mean of 12.9 seconds. So my x bar is 12.9. And it says assume population standard deviation is 0.19. So my sigma is a 0.19. I need to know these pieces here so that I can do this part right here. So let's go through in pieces. So first thing we're gonna do, X bar. X bar is 12.9. So guys, I'm gonna write this in parentheses, minus mu. My mu is the number that we have there, which is 13 in this case. And then uh, my kitty woke up from his nap. Uh, and then my sigma is a 0.19 divided by the square root of n, which was 32. Okay. So guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this part for us right here on my calculator. Okay. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do when we can, when we come up with that number for z. So let me, oops, let me stop sharing this and let me get my calculator going. So we can do that part. Let's see, calculator, what is it? And here we go. Okay, so my calculator should be showing up now. Here we go, let's turn it on. Let me clear my screen. So the first thing we had was we had 12.9 minus 13. Okay divided by, and then I put parentheses, and I had a 0.19 divided by the square root. So guys, on my calculator, when I do my square root button, it opens up parentheses for me. So I, I, when I put my 32, I got to close off those parentheses from the square root, and then I got to close off my parentheses because I had the one right here in front of my 0.19. And so the number that I'm coming up with here, um, by the way, guys, when I'm doing it, when I'm doing this part here is for Z, I'm always going to go two decimal places. So I'm coming up with a negative 2.98. Okay. So let me stop sharing this. And then we're going to come back one more time to our notes. All right. So right here, we're going to say this is a negative 2.98. Okay. So I'm going to come back in terms of the steps, right? We have just done number four. So number five, we're going to find the area that corresponds to Z. So we came up with a negative 2.98. Here's 0, 1, 2. These are negatives, by the way. Here's negative 3. So 2.98 is going to be right about there. And I'm looking for the area underneath it. This is going to give me my p-value. So guys, remember how we're going to do that. We're going to go normal CDF with a bunch of 9s. Negative, right? Because we're starting from the left. And we're going to a negative 2.98. Okay. So I'm going to do that part on my calculator again. So I'm going to go second bars, normal CDF. Let's hit enter. Okay, so we had a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, nines, comma, and then a negative 2.98. Okay. And so the number that I'm coming up with for my P is a point zero zero one four. So <clears throat> my P number here came up to a point zero zero one four. Now let's come back over here. 
Now that we found that, we're going to compare it to the alpha, right? Okay, so my P number in this case was 0 0.0014. Our alpha in this case was 0 0.01. So 0 0.0014 is less than or equal to 0 0.01, right? And let's see. If you notice right here, up here, guys, it says if P is smaller than alpha, then we're going to reject the HO. So the first thing I'm going to do right here, I'm going to say we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Now, the last part of the question says, is there enough evidence to support the claim, right? This is a part where we're basically going to make our decision. So guys, the one thing I want to point out here, and before I go on, and I know this is a lot, it's, it's a lot for everybody. Look at what our claim was. Our claim was the one that had the HA, and then we decided that we were going to reject the HO. So I'm going to stop sharing this piece here, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to share that cheat sheet with you guys that I have right now. And so here we go. All right. So this is what I'm looking at, guys. This little cheat sheet is like a lifesaver, okay? And the reason why I say that is when we're doing these problems here, we're going to basically pick from one of these four boxes. So originally we said that our claim was the HA and we were rejecting the HO. So what we're going to write out is we're going to say there is enough evidence to support the claim. That's all I'm going to write out. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing this here. I'm going to come back one more time, and right here, I'm going to say there is, there's enough evidence to support the claim. So there is enough evidence to Support the claim. Okay. So I know it's a lot. Uh, I can't even see you guys, and I know you're like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And it is. But the one thing I want to emphasize, guys, we're going to do one more like that, and then I'm going to show you. You know what? I'm going to show you the shortcut now. There's no reason to do another one just like that. And um, and I'll tell you what. We're going to do. We're going to stick with the same problem. And we're going to use the shortcut on this particular problem, okay? So let me get my calculator going because I want to show you that there is an easier way to do this problem. And let me see. One quick second so I can find it. Okay. That's what we want. Okay. So guys, I'm going to show you how to do the same problem using our calculator, okay? So I'm going to share my screen with you guys, my, I'm sorry, my calculator, so you can see what it is I'm going to do. So let's come back here, turn this on. Okay. So the first thing I do here, y'all, I'm going to hit my stat button, okay? And then I'm going to scroll over until I find tests. And I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to do a Z test, okay? So I'm going to hit enter. And I don't have the data, but I do have the stats. So I'm going to go to stats. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and start coming down here. So my mu, if you, if you look at the notes that we were doing right now, <clears throat> excuse me, the notes that we're doing right now, I want to say that our mu was the number 13. That was the number that we were using when we did our problem. So right here, I'm going to put a 13. And then our sigma, we had a 0.19. So I'm going to put a 0.19 right here. Okay. And let me see. My X bar, my X bar, we had a 12.9. Okay. And then my N, we had the number 32 for N. Now, this next part here is going to be based on our alternate hypothesis. Okay. My HA. So before I do this part here, I'm going to, sh I'm going to stop sharing this one more time. And I'm going to come back one more time to share the notes because 
I want you to notice something. So, so guys, as I was filling those numbers in, you could see my mu was 13, right? My X bar was 12.9, my sigma was 0.19, my N is 32. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna look at my HA. Look at the direction of this arrow. It's pointing to the left. So that's telling me that this is a left tail test, right? So now when I come back to my calculator and I pull that up so we can see it, there we go. Okay, it was pointing to the left. So right now I'm gonna do this. And now if you notice here, this is pointing to the left. I'm gonna hit enter. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit calculate. And if you notice, I'm coming up with a couple of things here. So our X bar, didn't we get a negative 2.98? That's the same number we're getting here, right? And my P value, I came up with a 0 0.0014. And that's the same number that we came up with before. So uh, hold on, guys. Let me, let me feed my kitty because he's going to keep meowing if I don't. And, uh, but what I want to point out is what we were able to do using this, we found the Z and we found the P, right? So if I stop sharing this and I come back to my, to my notes, we found the Z value. And we found the p-value. Hold on, buddy. He's an old cat, guys. He's like 16 years old. So uh, let's see. Here we go. We found the p-value and the z-value using the calculator. All we would really have to do now is just do this part. We're just going to do the comparison. So what the test allowed us to do, the calculator, it allowed me to skip this piece, this piece, and this piece because it found those values for me, right? So give me one quick second, guys, and then what we're going to do, we're going to do this next problem, and we're going to do it using our calculator. We're still going to have to write a few things down, but we're going to use our, we're going to do it using our calculator so we can see if we can come up with the answers a little quicker. So, anywho, I'm back. Okay, so let's take a look at this next one here. And again, guys, I'm going to do this one using my calculator. We're going to see if it makes sense. So it says, uh, a study says the mean time to recoup the cost of bariatric surgery is three years. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write down, since we're using the mean, and it says is three years, this is going to be equal to three. It says we randomly select 25 bariatric patients. So my N is 25, oops, 25, 29. Uh, and find the mean time to recoup their cost is 3.3. Assume the population standard deviation. So my sigma is 0 0.5 and the population is normally distributed. Is there enough evidence to doubt the studies claim that alpha equals 0 0.01? It says use a p-value. Okay, so guys, writing this down here, we're going to be able to figure some things out. Okay, so before I even get my calculator, when we wrote down this part right here, mu is equal to 3, I'm going to rewrite it a little bit over here outside. So I'm going to say mu was equal to three. This was our claim, right? And because this has an equal to part, this is my HO. So then my HA is going to say mu is not equal to three, okay? I really need to have those pieces of information before I can go on. So now let me use my calculator and we're going to figure out a couple of things. So I'm going to stop sharing this piece, and then I'm going to pull the calculator up one more time. There we go. Okay, so 
Let me turn it back on. Let me clear all this stuff out. We don't need it. So we're going to go to stat one more time. We're going to scroll over to test, and we're going to do the first one. We're going to do a Z test. Okay, and we're going to use our stats again. So now, every, all these numbers are going to change, right? Our mu we said was 3. Uh, our sigma, I mean, yeah, our sigma was something like a 0.05. So a 0.5, I'm sorry, not a 0.05, but 0.5. Uh, my X bar was 3.3. Our N was the number 25. Okay. And now, guys, this is the next part. This part is really important because I need to figure out, is this left tail, right tail, is this two tail? Okay. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do at this step, I'm going to stop sharing this one more time. I'm going to come back to my notes. And let's see. Here we go. And what I'm doing, y'all, Anytime I'm doing this, I have to look at my alternate. It always has to be the HA. And it says here it's not equal to. So when I come back to my calculator to do this piece here, I'm going to select, here we go, I'm going to select this one here that's not equal to. And I'm going to go ahead and go calculate. And we're coming up with our answers. So if you notice, um, the Z value, we found it. The P value, we found it. Uh, so look at my P value, 0 0.00269. So I'm probably going to go 0 0.0027, right? So I'm going to uh, stop sharing this. I'm going to come back to my notes one more time. There we go. And because it's telling me to use a P value, the P value we came up with is 0 0.0027. We need to compare it with the alpha. So the alpha is a 0 0.01. So I'm going to put a 0 0.01 here. And I know that 0 0.0027 is smaller than or equal to 0 0.01. Okay. So guys, now at that step, I'm going to come back and I'm going to use my cheat sheet here. Okay. So if I pull up my cheat sheet, where is it? Here we go. Okay, so we said that P was smaller than alpha, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis, okay? So on my notes, and I'm, I'm going to come back to that in a little bit, but I'm going to say we're going to reject, we're going to reject the HO. Okay, so um, the other thing I wanted to mention, y'all, is when I look at my notes again, I'm sorry I'm going back and forth a lot, but it's, uh, so I already wrote down here, we're going to reject the HO, right? And I want you to notice also, not only are we rejecting the HO, which one was the claim? Well, the claim was the HO, right? So when I come back to my cheat sheet here, we're going to say, look, the claim was the HO, and we rejected it. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, there is enough evidence to reject the claim, okay? And that's what I'm going to write out. So I'm going to write it here. There is enough evidence to reject the claim, okay? Now, guys, what I'd like to do at this point is before I go on to doing any other problems in, uh, in the notes is I'm going to pull up some of the homework problems that you guys have. And let me see. So, let's see. Okay. So what I'm going to do is is let's see this. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to share with you guys this problem right here. So this is problem number six out of our homework for 7.2, okay? 
And what I want to do is I want to go through one of these problems and I want to see, okay, can we make sense out of this? Can we make heads or tails out of what it is I'm trying to do here for number six, okay? And so, um, I'm going to put number six. Here in our notes. Okay. So let me stop this one here. Come back one more time. Okay. So I think you guys can see this now. Yeah. All right. So let's see if we can figure out how we can do this problem. So again, guys, this is number six directly out of the homework, and it says a sample of 79 eighth grade student scores on a national math test uh, has a mean score of 265. Okay. So I'm going to stop right here. So a sample of 79. So this is telling me that my n is 79, and the mean score is 265. Okay. Uh, the test result prompts the state school administrator to declare the mean score for the state's eighth graders on this exam is more than 260. Okay, so this part right here, this is my claim because it says they are declaring this. So my mu is going to be more than 260. So more than 260. This here happens to be my claim. Now, I want to point something out. Since this part here does not have the equal to part, that's going to be our alternate. That's going to be my HA. So my HO would be the opposite of this, which would be it's going to be less than or equal to 260. Okay. All right. And then it says, uh, assume the population standard deviation is 40. So my sigma in this case is going to be 40. And then it says that alpha at 0.04, is there enough evidence to support the administrator's claim? Okay, so now I want us to look at part A. Part A says, write the claim mathematically and identify the HO and the HA. Guys, that is exactly what we've done in this little box. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to look at what we have here in our box, and I want to say, which of those choices, A, B, C, D, E, or F, does this one match up to, right? So the HA is my claim, right? So I'm looking at, okay, here's my HA, that's my claim, here's my HA, that's my claim, and here's my HA, that's my claim. So and it looks like I at least narrowed it down to three choices. So i got to figure out, is it... Uh, is it C, D, or F? So let's see. Look at this one here. This has an equal to part, and we don't have an equal to, so I know it's not that. And the HA here is greater than or equal to, which we don't have. So we're going to say that part D is our answer. Okay. So to show you that I'm not, you know, making up stuff here. What we're going to do is we're going to come back over here, and we said our choice was D, so I'm going to go chickety check, and we got the first part right. Okay, so now part B says let's find the standardized test uh, statistic in its corresponding area. Okay, so guys, we can do that part using our calculator. Okay. So we're going to do that right now. Let me, let me stop sharing this here, and then let me come back to my notes here. Okay. And here's this part. Paste it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to find our standardized test statistic in the corresponding area. So the way we can do this, y'all, we can do this on the calculator. So what I'm looking at on my calculator is... The pieces of information that I need to know is I need to know this one. That's my mu. I need to know my x bar. My x bar. I need to know my sigma. And I need to know my n. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through this, y'all, on the calculator so you can see what it is I'm doing. And so let me do this. Come back over here. Get it. Boom. Okay, so let me turn this back on. Let me clear this. So we're going to go to stat. We're going to scroll over to test, and we're going to do the Z test. Okay, and we're still sticking with the stats part. So let me see. Why is this not wanting to go? Let's 
Let me try to find that stat. Test. 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 There we go. Okay. So we said in this problem, our, um, sorry, our mu was 260. So I'm going to put a 260 right here. Uh, my sigma in this case was 40. So I'm going to put a 40 right here. Our X bar happened to be a 265 right there. And our N was the number 75 right here. Oops, 75, not 79. And then my HA was greater than. So I'm going to scroll over till I get to this part right here. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to calculate. Okay, so if you notice here, I'm coming up with a Z value of 1.08 and a P value of 0.1395. Okay, so let me stop sharing this part here and let me share my notes one more time. Okay, here we go. And so my Z value was 1.08. So Z is one. Oops. One point zero eight, and my p value was point. Oh, let me see. I lost it. Uh, one three nine five. One three nine five. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my actual problem. No. Okay. So right here we had one point zero eight. Enter that in. Ooh, something didn't go right. What okay, no. Did I make a mistake in entering something? Uh, let me see. What did I do wrong? Sir, I think you did five instead of 79. Ah, it was 79, right? Yeah, I see that now. Thank you, ma'am. I see that. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, the. Okay. Let me come back to stat. Yeah, I'm going to fix that, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it was 79. Okay. Okay, so guys, uh, I'm doing this again, and now I'm coming up with 1.11. So let me change that. 1.11. Let's see. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, and our p-value, now I'm coming up with a p-value of point, uh, 0.1333. And it says to go to three decimal places, so 0.133 is what I'm going to do. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now, now when I get to choice to part B, it says, are we going to reject or are we going to fail to reject? Okay, so it's going to be one of those two, right, y'all? So let me, um, let me share my, my notes with you guys one more time. And let's see, let's come back here and go back to the notes. And here we go. Okay. So let's see. Oops. This number was a point, a one point, a one point eleven, and then a point one three three. One point eleven and P was point one three three. Okay, so guys, we're gonna compare P to alpha. So point one three three to point zero four. This is bigger than, right? So guys, I'm gonna I know I'm going back and forth a lot and I'm sorry about that, but I'm gonna share the cheat sheet with you guys one more time. So here's my cheat sheet. And look what it says right here. If P is bigger than alpha, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so when I come back to my actual problem right here, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so far so good. And now we got to answer. We got to answer this part. Okay, so the easiest way to answer this part here is to look at what we wrote down. What we wrote down was our claim was the alternate. 
And then we did a fail to reject the null. Okay. So I'm going to look for in my cheat sheet when the claim is the HA and then we fail to reject. What are we going to do? So we're going to come back one more time and here we go. So the claim is the HA, which is right here, and we fail to reject. So we're going to say there is not enough evidence to support the claim, right? There is not enough evidence to support the claim. So what that means is when I'm doing this on my, my lab and I'm doing this problem, we say there's not enough evidence to support the claim, we're going to say at 4% uh, significance level, there is not enough evidence to support the claim. And then we're going to go chickety check and we got it. Okay. So um, guys, I know it's a lot. It, it definitely is a lot. And especially when you're first getting started, you're kind of using the cheat sheet. You're kind of using your calculator. You're having to write stuff down. Um, and that's basically how you're kind of approaching these problems, you know, and, uh, and it can be a little intimidating, but, um, the, I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to pull up some things that I think you should do in doing these problems. Right. So like my first step I would tell you is number one, identify the claim. Number two, find your HO and your HA. And then number three, find your N, your mu, your X bar, and your sigma. And then number four, uh, do your Z test on the calculator to find your Z value and your P value. And then number five, you're either going to reject the null or you're going to fail to reject the null. And the way you're going to do that guys is you're going to compare your P to your alpha, right? And then you can make your decision based on which one is the claim and did you reject or did you fail to reject? And you can do that. And it, I mean, it takes time to go through guys. I, I don't want to lie that it's, that it's going to be, you know, super quick. It's not going to be super quick. But I will tell you that the more that you do this, the easier it's going to get. Okay. It just takes some time to do. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing that. And then guys, one thing I wanted to mention um, is that tomorrow I am going to send out an email. One of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to send you guys an email guys, letting us know about like the final exam schedule and when that's going to be. The other thing I want to do is um, every past due assignment that we had, I'm going to reopen them up. So every, every homework assignment, I'm